Yes. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well. So in today's video, I just want to encourage us not to waste our talents. You should not waste the gifts and talents that you have, that you should put them to use to bless those around you and to bring glory to God. The inspiration for this video came from the parable of the talents, which is found in Matthew. But it also came from some of the conversations I've had with people who are more mature and older than me. So I have quite a few friends who are older than me like most of my friends are older than me something they always say is that oh i wish i had done this earlier or i wish i had put this plan into action when i was younger i wish i had taken that risk or i wish i had used that gift i wish i had used that talent i think it's something that really encouraged me and made me think what am I being complacent about? What gifts have I got? Or what talents have I got? Or what abilities and skills do I have that I could put to use now? And what's stopping me? Why am I not taking advantage of these opportunities and things that God has blessed me with? So we're gonna look at the parable of the talents and there's a few things that I really wanna, I want us to take away from this and actually apply it to our life, you know, cause wisdom is application. I know all of us, we know the parable of the talents inside out. Like it's one of those talents that they teach you in Sunday school when you're really, really young. But how many of us are really applying the lessons that we can learn from it? And the parable of the talents is really a lesson in stewardship. It's really a lesson in being accountable. It really does show us how God views us as his children and how he will, give to each one of us according to our deeds, according to how we live our lives, according to how we maximize or minimize what he's blessed us the with. One of the talents is found in Matthew 25, verse 14 to verse 30, but I'm not gonna read it out. I would say maybe you can pause the video now and take the time to just read through it a couple of times and sort of remind yourself of what happened. And then once you're done, just press play. <laughs> The first thing we can learn from this parable is that God gives to each person in different measure. What the sister next to you have, you may not have. And what you may have, that sister next to you might not have. And that doesn't mean that you are any less. That doesn't disqualify your talent. It just means that God has given everyone according to their ability. If we look at verse number 15, it says, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on his journey. So to each according to his own ability. So God knows what you can handle. God knows what the girl next to you can handle. God knows what the guy on the other street can handle. It's not for you to judge, why didn't I get X amount or Y amount? It's for you to see, okay, God has given me this. And this means that God knows that I can work with what this gifting or this talent is, and I can make something out of it. God is not going to give me more than I can handle. And God is not going to cheat me out of what I can handle. He's going to give me exactly what I need. I want to encourage you to look into the things that maybe you you see insignificant, the gifts or the talents that you have that you count as insignificant because maybe it's not as magnificent as the person next to you and see how has God blessed me with this so that I can develop it, so that I can grow in this area, so that I can bless other people and don't overlook the smallest of gifts that you may possess right now. Another thing we can learn from this parable is that it takes time, you know, invest Investing in your talents or investing in your gifts takes time. It says that the man or the master, he went to a very far away country and he didn't come back for a very long time. So that means the servants had a time or a period of stewardship, a period to harvest, a period to sow into them their gifts, a period to either invest, a period to either haggle, a period to either um, do loads of different things while the master was away. The servants who went out and invested in their talents, that must have taken sweat, that must have taken energy, that must have taken time, but they did it because they trusted that, yes, I wanna make the most of what my master has given to me. I want my master to be pleased with me. We have to have that same zeal, that same passion, that same fervor about whatever it is we find our hands to do because whatever we find our hands to do has a purpose. Sometimes that purpose is far beyond what we can imagine right now. There's some things that God has given to us and tr entrusted in our hands that he wants us to use to bless the person we've not met yet or he wants us to use to bless the person we may meet tomorrow but if we're not being proactive if we're not taking those initial steps now by God's grace to develop those talents to develop those gifts there's going to be people who around you are not being blessed if you have a ability to read or if you have an ability to speak or if you have ability to sing maybe you need to take out time and see how can I develop in this area how can I improve this area and that may take time that may 
take money, that may take energy, that may take resources. But ultimately, as you've seen in this parable, every single person who sowed into those talents, they reaped back um, what they had sown. So your, your labor is not in vain, basically. Your labor is not. The next thing we can learn from this parable is that God delights in those who use what he gives them. God delights when people, us as his children, are grateful for what we have been given and we now use those gifts. Each of the servants that were faithful to invest in what he had given them, he blessed them. He rewarded their faithfulness and is seen as faithful when you are given something and God has given you that gift to steward over and you invest in it. God will call you faithful and he will bless you. Another thing we can learn from this parable is that fear often stops us from using the gifts we have been given or for using those talents that we have been given. Just like I said before, when I speak to people who are much older than me, they say, oh, um, they say that they regret not doing these things. Maybe they were afraid of not doing these things. There is a certain level of risk when you want to invest in something or when you want to take your focus and put time and energy into a craft or put time and energy into a venture but I want to say to you that if you are so fearful that you're going to bury that thing you're going to be selfish enough to keep that thing hidden away and not let anyone else make use of it or be blessed by it then God is going to look on look down on you and he's not going to be pleased with you. God will hold you accountable to everything that he has given you every gift that he has placed into your hands and said this is yours he wants to see you using it are you like the prophet profitable servants who invested in those and reaped a harvest or are you like the other servant who was too afraid and didn't do anything I was in the end punished we all want to hear God say to us well done good and faithful servant when we see him on that day none of us want to be cast out so we do really have to assess ourselves and see where we are you may not know exactly what your gifts and talents are but you must not be afraid to just try things out Maybe put your foot here, put your hand there and see what works out. But you can be assured that God has given you talents. God has given you gifts. And yes, they may need nurturing. They may be developing, but they are there. And so it's time for you to discover what those gifts are. Talents. Do not be afraid to try new things. Even if you do fail or even if you do take a wrong step, you get back up and you move on and you learn. But don't be so afraid of failing that you don't even try don't be so afraid of taking a wrong step that you don't even take a step at all you know a long journey begins with one step some of you need to be strong enough to just take that one step and trust that you know god is going to lead me god is going to direct my paths because i'm trusting in him and yeah you know you don't know what God can do with you or what God wants to use your life for. So this has been an encouragement to you. I hope this has challenged you. Do share with a friend that you think may need this. Do subscribe, like, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Yes, you can. Uh -huh. Yes, you can. Ooh. Yes, you can.